Video recordings of this podcast can be found on RaisingEquity.org and Raising Equity on YouTube. Welcome to Raising Equity. On today's episode, we're going to dig into what it means to help kids see themselves reflected back in art. I have an artist and muralist, Kababi Bayak, who's going to talk to us about where the inspiration for his work comes from and all the awesome projects he has going on. Welcome, Kababi. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for the offer. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit before, but just to frame, you know, at Raising Equity, we're all about helping kids understand themselves, other people, and understand systems of oppression so that they can create equity. And I really feel like from the moment I got to know you, your work helped that happen because you help kids see themselves. Mm -hmm. Your artwork literally reflects black, brown, children of color, all children in a way that helps them see themselves in a positive light. Has it always been how you've done your work? Uh, that's where it's been most recently. Before that, it was just kind of painting stuff that was cool. But like where I met y'all with the dad project, that's when it really started to kick in. You know, yeah. More concerned about children seeing themselves in the work. Maybe talk a little bit about that project. I remember meeting you at school. Our kids were at the same school. And you announced this 365 days with dad. And I was so excited because I resonated with this idea that black fatherhood does not get portrayed in artwork. And so what, what made you take that approach? I was needing to do a project that coming year to just to make money doing art. And I had subject ideas. Um, but after talking to rain, she mentioned that I really wanted to do a project on fatherhood and this was the time to do it. And so chose that theme. And then that's how I came up with the name, you know, 365 days with dad. So it just it started out of need before I was even thinking about purpose or a mission or really? making a statement. I mm -hmm. was just wanted to come up with a subject that I could do consistently for a year. Mm -hmm. And then it quickly became something. Oh yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It quickly. Yeah. <laughs> quickly. How fast did you sell out those days? I didn't know if I sold out fast, but um, once I got going, I don't even know, I, I wish I had kept better track, but it couldn't have been more than a week or so before people started requesting dates. Like they didn't want to miss, even though it was a whole year coming ahead, they like wanted to make sure that they got one and it just kind of got out of control and just, just went with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's so important because you want kids to understand a counter to the narrative that always gets put out about black fathers, right? Like in our media, they put out this narrative that black fathers are absent and yes, mass incarceration has disproportionately impacted black and Brown men, but black fathers are not disproportionately absent. Yeah. And so to me, I felt like it was making a statement even just by choosing that subject matter because it was, it was countering a narrative. In the very beginning, three, six, five days of dead. I didn't even say black dads. So yeah, I don't even know true. when that started. That's true. I couldn't even remember the importance. I think I had a conversation about it needs to be. But I think right after coming up with that, folks outside the community started asking if they could be involved in it. And that got real uncomfortable. <laughs> it did. Because a lot of people that, it's not just black folks that buy my work. So now I got people that want to be a part of this art project. And I had to email them back and say, can't right now <laughs> so really i appreciate your support but i have to i have to do this project for black children first so oh so you so that you, was deep you yeah. turned some people down i did i got in a little back and forth with some you know about it too you know because sometimes it was well yeah i did because one cat was from um he's latino um yeah and then a few others but actually you know it worked out and people were understanding but it was a little bit, it was very uncomfortable to have to make that statement mm -hmm. just because I, you know, I'm, I avoid conflict. Right. And so now here I'm doing this project, it's getting all this attention and folks want to be a part of it. And I have to tell them like, sorry. Yeah. That was yeah. Good. And That's the point tough. was to make money at first, but then it became a social statement. So I was like, just got to trust and just do yeah. it. And there we are. Yep. Yep. I, I, as you say that, when I first heard about it, I just assumed it was black dads. Exactly. I mean, yeah. And I think that's what Rain said too. She's like, you can't do white fathers. I was like, I ain't even thought about it. I think I just assumed it. I didn't even think about who I'd be painting. I just 
because I was going to do 365. And yeah, and then it had to be intentional. And it's like, whoa, all right. So I had to make a few statements here and there as I was posting. Mm-hmm. I had to, I had to say I'm doing Black Fathers. I had to, I had to let, set the tone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so often people feel like, oh, well, that's being exclusionary. But I really think it's important to, to think about in the larger context. It's yeah. actually being in response to and in conversation with the negative narratives. And part of raising equity is getting people to, to, to see those narratives. Yeah. And so, like, if we understand the narrative, the negative narrative of Black fatherhood that gets portrayed, right? Exactly. Then we need a response. Yeah. We need an antidote. Uh, Rebecca Bennett, who's uh, a, the co-chair of Ford Through Ferguson and does a lot of amazing work in, the, in this area, talks about we need to seed the healed future. Mm-hmm. And I see your work as, as doing that. Like, it's, it's planting seeds so that when kids see your work, regardless of their racial or ethnic background, exactly. that they are seeing black fatherhood. Yeah. And that's powerful. Yeah. Because it came the same way people were defending Black Lives Matter. Like I had to explain why you got to pay black children. And I was like, if anybody's going to do it, it needs to be a <laughs> black male. Mm. Yeah, I think that gives it more power. Mm. As I mean, black woman could have done it too, but anybody outside the community, I don't think it would have had the same impact. Mm-hmm. And just coming from, you know, my situation, my story, and being a dad, and, you know, even taking deeper than that, I had a little tougher. Well, after, after I mentioned that my dad committed suicide, I actually, some of the fathers who I painted were no longer here. So I had to really? share their story too, which every now and then when I went to schools, you know, there was always a student there who had had a parent who had just passed or just killed themselves. So, mm. so I didn't avoid it. Right. And just let them see that, you know, you can still focus on the good parts. Yeah. Right. Well, that was but, a gift. But don't feel shame in what's happened because you know, it's not you that did it. It's part of your story, but you don't have to carry the shame. That's powerful. And that's a yeah. gift that you were willing to be open. Yeah. How old were you when your father committed 12, suicide? 11, 12. Really? I just started EDMR um, therapy. Just now? Yeah. yeah I'm going to have my third session today. So yeah. I'm trying to go back and figure out what makes me me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a lifelong journey. And my actions and all that, just figuring out. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm starting to dig. Huh. Yeah. That's a real formative time to lose your father. Absolutely. So now that that even has more meaning. Yeah. I knew I knew that you had lost your father to suicide. I didn't realize how young you were. Yeah. And I've been introverted until I was an adult. I just really started talking. Hmm. Yeah. To people and communicating and all that. So hopefully I can get you more open and more vulnerable and yeah yeah so we'll see has art always been a vehicle for you to express yourself and i didn't, I didn't really start till college really yeah so you you did not i could draw a little art. bit but i took one class in high school but yeah once i graduated high school i decided i was gonna major in art and where'd you major in art it was bac at the time swick over in belleville okay i did two years there and then i transferred to Grambling state louisiana yep okay and yep. always painting Always painting and drawing. Yeah, that was my major. And I started painting in college. Yeah, that's when I started painting. Okay. And then I've pretty much been painting since. And your sense of self as a black man in this world, I'm sure, was shaped being Grambling. a Grambling. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, right before going there, I mean, I went down there with beads and big earrings, you know, because X-Clan and all that was what was big on Rap City and all that. So, you know, diggable planets. So I went down there, yeah. But I still went down there. Sea Baby was how I was signing my artwork, so I didn't change to Kababi until I got to Gremlin. Ah, tell us that story. And for folks who don't know, Gremlin is a HBCU, a historically yep. black college and university. Be there um, at the end of the month, homecoming. Yeah. Yes, first it is homecoming season. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I took a Swahili class my first semester at Gremlin, and I saw how the words were put together. And so that's when I decided to change the way I, I pronounced my name and make it an acronym. So it's, tell me the history of it. So, I mean, born Clifford. Yes. So, once I started painting, I decided C Baby would be my art name. Okay. And so, when I got down to Gremlin, you know, my friends were in Nation of Islam, were Fire Percenters, and everything anti white, anti gay, all that. So, I had, had a strong black name. And I was like, hmm. So, you know, I'm going to be a black artist. So, I decided I turned C Baby into Kababi. Was it always with an I at the end? No, it was C Baby. What, like, literally, why? why? Yeah. Clifford C. You know, that's and how I came with C Baby. Baby yeah. And so I got down there and just changed it and make it an acronym. Okay. Yeah. Creative black artist battling ignorance. I didn't know what that meant, but 
Yeah. <laughs> Which you were, you were battling good. ignorance. It, yeah. did, it, do, it does. So it sounds go, good. Man. Absolutely. Well, and it also just reminds us that we're constantly on a journey yep. of battling ignorance within ourselves and in society. Yeah. Yeah. And funny enough, I don't think it, it really kicked off till I did 365 Days of Dad. I think that's when the name started really coming in. In my 40s. Yeah. To really kind of come in alignment with yeah. your work. Battling ignorance and all that. You know, nothing deep. Just growing, learning new every day. Something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So since 365 Days with Dad, I feel like you've done a lot of work that's been about battling ignorance, making a statement. Like you said, I remember you did some of the utility covers yep. in Ferguson. Yeah. Tell us how that came. That was a city that asked you to do that work. Yeah, it was um, St. Louis Partnerships, um, Erica, um, a St. Louis Partnership. She asked, they gave me that project to mm-hmm. do those pieces out there. Um, yeah. And then the, just the children with words and the birds and words. And, um, and then Mike Brown killing and doing all the children, you know, once the fire happened, the flag burning, that kicked off a series. So I think everything changed after 365 because, you know, somebody else brought up to me that it was a political statement just because I was only doing Black Fathers. And, you know, I, again, I didn't even think about that then, but definitely since that series, more people started asking me when I was going to do this, what was my response to that? You know, what are you going to do next? Yeah, I could see people started looking at me different mm-hmm. in my art. How did that feel? Uh, I think if, I don't know, I think if, I think I noticed it, but I, I didn't really think about the weight of it. Um, but I think I really noticed it more working on murals and, and just the way people talk about, you know, he does stuff in the community. And I was like, well, you know, I did that project. You know, I was like, but now I was doing stuff in the community. So I was like, well, okay, where mm-hmm. we go? Mm-hmm. You know, and I just kind of let it happen. And yeah. Yeah. And it, then when Mike Brown, like I said, was killed, and I did that piece out there. And, you know, somebody just asked me, where, you know, because they said they saw the prints around the city. And I was like, yeah, I gave them all away. So, you know, did a Kickstarter ish, whatever that platform was, mm-hmm. just gave them out. And, mm-hmm. You know, all that stuff just kind of built the way people look at me now. Right. Right. Yeah. And so you mentioned the murals. You're doing a lot of murals. I've done a lot, done over 15. 16 in school since last January. Really? Yeah. How long does it take to do those? About five to 10 days. And do the kids get to be involved at all? Some of them. Some of them they've actually painted on the wall. Sometimes they give me sketches. Um, Some schools come down and they'll sit down and just watch me and ask me questions. I use all that to, you know, you know, influence what goes on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do the schools usually say when they ask you to come in? Why? What is their why? Diversity, inclusion. They want all the children in the school to see themselves or a classmate in some character on the wall. Okay. They want everybody to feel included. Okay. So they really are asking you to reflect the student body. Absolutely, yep. Like I'm about to go back to school and do, like one of my, you know, this is my biggest mural I've done in a school. And it's all fairy tales. Like Cinderella. No, Cinderella's not on there. Snow White. Harry Potter and all that, but all the characters that flipped and changed and made them something different. Even Ferdinand, I made a little boy who's hanging a flower to the bull. And I do all these little things, you know, and I have to go back and, you know, they want, um, usually a child is impaired in there. So they really want everybody to feel like they, they're seen. Mm-hmm. So yeah. a physical disability, yeah, or all that, yep. race and gender yep. and all of that. So what's, what's been the response to these murals? Oh, I mean, I got them all by word of mouth, so I haven't solicited anybody. So that's one mm-hmm. thing, like a principal will go to somebody else's school and visit and then they'll reach out or a teacher knows somebody, a friend in another school and they've just been passing me around. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. my info around. Yeah. So do you have any stories around how the kids have responded or the impact the murals have had on them? Yeah, the one story I, I told you earlier in particular when I did Snow White, you know, as a little girl of color, because I, I say a color because I, when they ask, I don't say what she is. She just happens to be brown skin, and, you know, dark hair. Yeah, but a little boy came in and he was an Indian descent or he's Indian. Yeah, because there's a lot of there's a big Indian population out there, which shocked me. But South they Asian mentioned Indian. Monsa- Monsa- Montana, Montana, Monsanto and all that's out there. So gotcha. A lot of Latino families. You know, like I was shocked, but. Yeah, he, he just made a comment about, you know, Snow White doesn't look like that. And I was like, oh, that's the whole point of this mirror. I was like, trying to break the traditional way. When people, kids, when you guys read these stories and see yourselves in them, like they don't have, the character doesn't have to look like the character in the book. Pretend that's you living that life. 
you can have those experiences. But that's the point of this mural. Mm-hmm. And the whole room is based on all the art. I think all the stories and the books that are going to go in this room are going to be um, ethnicity outside of the white community. Okay. So what it's is- the first one out in the county like this. So what did the boys say? Um, which part? When you said this he didn't is say just- anything. I mean, yeah, he just. Yeah, he just once he said that, and I said, oh, "Well, that's the point." Right. And he's like, "Oh, okay." Okay. Well, yeah, but I think the little girl. There was a little girl who heard that, and she that really hit her because she went home and told her parents. Mm. And I, I think her mom I made a came with her the next day and said mm-hmm. something. But yeah, she she said it, it, yeah, it made her cry a little bit out of pride mm-hmm. that she you know was being defended that mm-hmm. that work on the wall that she can relate to mm-hmm. yeah so it was, it's been good yeah. yeah i think we underestimate how concretized the the images get in children's head yeah right that snow white looks a certain way or that use snow that white. word next time go to a school concretize <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and, they, and they might they might resonate with that because they got concrete somewhere yeah, that's right, right? right yeah. like that these ideas become like concrete in our brain yeah, and, and real. really hard to break absolutely and the, you're right that's the whole point of the mural is to like break our our assumptions to break our correlation and the connection that we have between this being snow white and then all, like one next degree is that that's beauty yeah right and so then that's there's it. not room yeah for black and brown beauty Exactly. And again, I think it's important for us to to think about how we have the opportunity when kids are young to expose them. And then it's less work when they get older. Absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you, I often say the part of the reason why I started raising equity is I was tired of kids coming to my college classes blown away. Like I would blown sh- away by what? By disparities, by systematic oppression. Like when I would teach them about that it was happening that it was happening wow and that it was on purpose and that it was by design wow and that there's a history of not just woohoo but like actual entrenchment of these ideas yeah. and they continue yeah i often have to have a conversation with them like don't go home at thanksgiving and rail at your parents and <laughs> because they are so mad like they're mad like yeah. why didn't you tell me and um i that's one of the things that i hope that as we teach kids from a young age that they don't look at me like I'm lying to them. Right. Or that like my my pushback around, you know, why do we equate white normative beauty as beauty? Yep. Right? Like to ask that question, they should be asking that question younger. Yeah. And that's what I think your artwork allows for mm-hmm. is it allows them, because they're young, they're just absorbing it like sponges. Yep. So that maybe maybe they don't have to ask that question because they already see such a range of skin tones and abilities Mm -hmm. as accepted, as beautiful, as the norm. Yeah. They don't just see one narrow thing represented. Exactly. Yeah. And then a a lot of schools are very white and, you know, and I come out there and I'm doing what I want for a living and painting and even the whole mistake thing and all that, you know, and just being perfect and, you know, just breaking all that oh. stuff. Like I like to physically smack the wall where one of the paintings is of somebody's face. Yeah. Tell them I can put the eye where I want, you know, and tell them to stop judging each other. And so I can make it relate to the school too. And not, cause oh. I'm not their teacher. So now here I am just somebody who paints and I can get them a lesson. Hopefully they can take and relate to something that they're doing in the school. So, so yeah. you, you have lessons around, it sounds like making mistakes that you can make them Yeah, and that you can, rectify you can Absolutely. come back from mistake yeah and then you mentioned one around like bullying is that what you mean i did like have when, that in one yeah I yeah bullying in. but even just judging just telling somebody else what they should do as opposed to letting them gotcha let them do their thing and then you ask about it later you know but stop you know what somebody should do or shouldn't do mm-hmm. so just let them do it mm-hmm. you know and then let it happen first and then come up afterwards and mention it you know still don't even give your opinion and just let it be yeah <laughs> But you it's been interesting, yeah. I bet. And even the whole, how do you paint so fast? I'm like, well, how do you say ABCs? You know, it's like they say it. And I was like, say it faster. And it's like, okay. I was like, so once you know how to do something, you get efficient. So that's how I painted so fast. Practice. And they're like, oh, it's like yeah. I couldn't paint when I was your age, but that don't mean I can't now. Right. Yeah. A yeah. lot of lessons. <laughs> a lot of. I'm sure they're intrigued by you. I'm you... surprised some stuff comes out of my mouth, man. I was like, oh wow, that was good. So yeah. <laughs> you need. <laughs> start capturing start that rolling man yeah 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 is that what made you start the youtube channel yeah but i still not getting everything because i mean i'm 
playing cameraman, I'm painting, uh, and I'm editing, and it's just too much. Yeah. So now I got one of those uh, um, construction cams, the uh, stop motion that oh. I'll just speak over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so like, well, who says what it needs to look like? You know, I'm watching Spike Lee, I was like, I just make put something raw and real up. Right. For now, you know, we'll just. Like, I don't want to overthink it. Yeah. Well, you yeah. mentioned even just your stimulus value as a black man who's tall and tattooed. Exactly. You've had reactions to that. How have kids reacted? Um, I don't even know how to act because I don't ask. But yeah. What I have just, you noticed? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Because you know when you go to school, because some kids are like, they love you. Some won't talk to you because they have no idea who you are. So I never know what it's really about. So, yeah. But I don't really care. I just, I just talk to them, you know. And it's funny because a lot of kids that come around, I do notice a lot of things. I notice, you know, those quote unquote special kids, a lot of them are young black boys. So I do wonder about that sometimes. And so I'm seeing all this stuff in school that I hear people talking about. And I'm just observing because mm-hmm. I don't even know what to ask because that's just not my expertise. But mm-hmm. I see a lot and it just makes me think mm-hmm. you know, what's going on. Yeah. 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 Well, I bet your presence does mean something it just like oh yeah the it'll little... bring those ca- cats around and talk yes. and hang out you know so i just yeah. talk to them like yeah yeah absolutely mm-hmm. and you're not just in schools i i know that there's a burgeoning whole area around health equity and art and using art to to yeah. navigate equity and you've traveled throughout the country to do that work tell us yeah, a little bit about that indiana and did a school out there um and even siteman cancer center out in north county I think that is next week they're doing the groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. So I did a piece in there. Um, and then SSM SLU Hospital opening up here at Shodown Grand. I'm doing four big paintings. Are you? In that main corridor. Nice. Yeah. And there's a brother who's a pre- president there. Nice. Um, yeah. And again, the whole trail that I've led, they, they haven't asked for a sketch. So all those pieces, they're just kind of like, trust me. Yeah. Which is scary, but... You know, it's Scary. making me trust myself. Oh, yeah, yes, for sure. That's exciting. You still don't know what people are going to want. You know, you think you do. But when they say, yeah, just do you, I mean, they don't really know what's in my head, what I really want to do. So so I'm still kind of posing. I'm like giving them what I know they want, not necessarily mm. what I want. Because I really want to go abstract. Like I'm busting with seams. I yeah. I go more abstract. Yeah. And? Oh, I can't do it here because that's not what they've seen, you know. So you're going off people's expectations. So it's a balance between what they, what do you, but doing you is what they expect also. Right. Because well, it's a gig. Before, it is. Before, before well, I slip my stuff in there won, now. I slip my know? stuff in there though. Okay. I do slip it in. But I'm actually doing a mural for Becky at um, Big Brother, Big Sister for a new. Yeah. That one's all abstract. Nice. So I'll get to show what I like doing there. So yeah. you'll start to ease it in. Just ease it in. What about the work you did up in Connecticut? The, with UConn, the Health Disparities Institute? That was uh, black men. Okay. Yeah, that was mostly black men and fatherhood. Yeah, it, it was appropriate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I got all these things, you know, but I just know, I, I think about the idea of one day being like, yeah, he used to be figurative, like like, like that being my part of my story. You know? Okay. Because, and I think that now, because of course I might change, but. But when you leave figurative and go abstract, is, I, I I'm think it's still tied artist. together, you know, because for me, I, I see it already in my work. I, I do take too. The faces out. Yep, yeah. I've been seeing that more and more. Yeah, I'm sl- sliding in there a little more Picasso ish. Yes. Yeah, but even yep. eventually, even going pushing past that, you know, just to see. Yeah, and still finding it relevant. Yeah, because I was still at the art museum just now and they're talking about black and abstraction. Yeah. Finding the meaning. I ain't I always been able to see the meaning. I don't always buy it either. I think some of us hustle, but. Um, but I know it's all in the artist's intent. If I can sit down with the artist and ask them how you got to this. Right. You know, then. Yeah, it'd be something, but I know for me, yeah, I want to be a little looser. Yeah. Yeah. So for people who want to expose their children to art, to your artwork yeah. or to artwork like yours, yeah. who do you say they should follow? Ooh, there's so many people online. I mean, a lot of people know Kadir Nelson. Oh, yeah. Um, Frank Morrison. Um, there's a lot of artists out there. Whack, I've known forever, you know, out of Atlanta, Chicago area. Um but really, I just tell them on Instagram. I mean, that's why I tell everybody go. Because a lot of people still, I don't do Instagram. I was like, well, that's where a lot of artists are. I mean, that's where they're putting their work up. That's you know? true. There Could are still museums around, but not as many galleries as it used to be. Yeah. Especially not here. I ain't one. Uh, for black art? No, nah, I ain't one. I ain't one. They're hmm. all gone. I never thought about that. Yeah. What, there used to be one? Portfolio. 
Yeah, there used to be a huge fine art in Central West End 20 years ago. Um, portfolio lit those on, on a loop. There used to be 20 years ago. It. Hmm. <laughs> I never realized that. It. All right, there's not one. So then, like you said, the digital platform really is king. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Now you got Swiss Beats. He's real big on yeah. pushing artists. You know, so he's put doing his thing around the world. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of celebs out there that are really pumping up black artists. Yeah. It's just a new, new time. It is. And I feel like it's so needed. Absolutely. I remember when my kids were young, Kadir Nelson was illustrating every every book under Still the sun. Still is. Really? Yeah, almost every New York Times cover. The, the little magazine. Yeah. He's had several of those oh, recently. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, I mean, he's still going strong. I mean, I believe he is. I just, in children's book world, I'm not reading those yeah, he's, anymore. He's still so, doing those. I, exactly. Right. right? Exactly. You know, it's like a phase. Yeah, you transition so. out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, his, he's still uh, out there. that's great. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Huh. So, do you feel like your evolution in terms of your artwork and, making a statement around black fatherhood and blackness in general, has that shaped how you parent your kids? Um, a little bit. I mean, most of their, most of their friends are white. Um, but we never really tripped off that, you know, I just want them to be comfortable, but, but I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't stop me from yeah doing certain things. Like my sons like to walk around target by themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and of course we had to be like, Hey, Whatever you, headphones, leave that in the car. You know, you're walking around, keep your hands out your pockets, you know, doing all that kind of stuff and trying to let them be as free as possible, but still be cautious, mm -hmm. you know, of what you're doing, mm -hmm. how you look. And unfortunately, you just got it right now. Got it. Yeah, you're young and a boy, and you know what it is, what it is. So. Well, I mean, unfortunately, but yeah. I got to tell you, if I don't tell you, I'll feel terrible if something happens. You know, didn't prepare you. And yet, <laughs> it's not our fault. Not our right, fault. it's it's really hard, yeah. And I I think what you said is important. That's that our kids just because we have a strong sense of blackness and black pride doesn't mean that we don't want our kids to have white friends, right? right. Like those things are not mutually exclusive. Yeah, they they can coexist. If I want my kids to respect and have friends and connections across all sorts of races, but Absolutely. I also want them to be proud of who they are as exactly. black boys. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they know some things. I took a giant to the movie. Um, the little girl, her front friend was killed in the beginning of the movie. The movie that everybody was going to see. Oh, the hate ago. you give. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, afterwards, he broke it down and was talking about stories. And you know, that just recently happened. And so, I know he's conscious of stuff. They don't just walk around talking about it. But they're conscious of it. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. So they see, you know. So it was good to take them that and hear them talk and think it out. And then they just go and put their headphones on. So it's like they're taking a lot of information, but they, they take it, they just don't sit on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're not running out of protests, but they, they're, they're aware. Yeah, they are. So as long as they're at least aware, I don't want to be oblivious. Right. But I don't want them to suck all their life out of me. Right. Yeah. It's a balance. Gotta right? live life. Yeah. It's a balance. Because you do. You don't want them to be driven by fear yeah. of what could be or worry about what could be. Exactly. And you also, like you said, you feel like you wouldn't be responsible if you didn't prepare them. Yeah, that's right. Did you see When They See Us? Yes, I did. Phew, that was a hard and, uh, one. Yeah. It was a hard it one was, to watch. Uh, it was. I don't think I've weeped and wailed like that ever in response to a movie. Yeah. Um, but it relates to what we were saying in that what I left that film with or that mm. series with rather than like, being paralyzed by fear that that could happen to my child because it could yeah i'm i'm not going to dwell on that i'm going to be just as uh intensely adamant that they live a free life right as free of a life as i can give them because i know that in a moment's notice you know my phd won't save them nothing's going to save them if the system embroils them in that way absolutely so all children should be able to live free lives and should never be in Rikers at 16 and all of those things. It made me um, check my fear in a sense. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. And hopefully even beyond that, we see the importance of therapy. It's, uh, it seemed like, I mean, they all had terrible situations, but of course, you know, the two cats, Corey and the other guy, um, you could tell they really, really need it. I don't know if Corey is, but I can't remember the other cat's name. 
where they were emphasizing the story between him and his father. Like, mm-hmm. he seems mm-hmm. really damaged, mm-hmm. and he won't go get therapy, mm-hmm. but, but he seems really damaged. Yeah. He's, like, really messed up. Mm-hmm. Like, he's struggling heavily to this day, but he won't do therapy. Really? So Has he said he won't? He said on the show that, yeah, he's he just not doing it. can't. Yeah. yeah. He, he won't ever forgive him. I mean, he's just, like, stuck in this steep. So you wonder how they transfer that on, you know, how I can right. fully love and give love. He's in that crippled state. We pass down so much that yeah. we don't even realize we're passing down. Like, yeah. yeah. It's heavy. It's yeah. heavy. Yeah. And in a way, art can be a way for people to express themselves and yeah. emote. Excellent. Therapy is not the only way. Yeah. Has it been that for you? Probably been my therapy. Yeah. If I get feeling some kind of way and feeling stuck, yeah, just paint, you know. Helps me get through the day, help create something. Um, and again, doing uh, most of my career, or a lot of times I would talk to people why I paint. You know, since having children, children became more the subject of my work. And I did realize that you know, a lot of black children don't really trip off the art museum so because they, they don't see themselves. Um, so I know a lot of adults now who said they've never been, or they might have been once a while back in school, but they ain't been since because there's no connection. So I do think about that. But even going towards the abstract work that I want to do, I still want to come from a sincere, sincere place so I can explain why what you see is what is, and what is it based on. Because you know, mm. they're usually based on something figurative or mm-hmm. something, the forms is still figurative, but mm-hmm. taken away from that is about the motion and movement, but the colors, the emotion is all there. But tr- trying to figure out a way to do that. But yeah, letting people know that it is, for me, a form of therapy, a form of prayer, a healing. Um, yeah, and it helps me stay calm and chill. And, you know, I used to be real off balance and yelling at my kids a lot. It came to a point where I decided I wasn't going to yell anymore, and I haven't in years. You know, even though I get super frustrated, you know, even 16 year old, teaching them to drive. For some reason, I could still stay chill, you know, because I've been intentional about it. You know, but I just, because I knew they just weren't going to hear anything me yelling. And all I did was mess me up. Because mm. after I yelled at them, now I'm carrying it, and so I'm going to carry that into whatever else I'm doing. But if I just stay chill and calm, and just transition to whatever else I need to do with a clear mind. So, mm-hmm. yeah. No, that's real. If I know I can do that, I can do anything. Right. Because it's really easy to just yell. Yeah. Yeah, that's the easy out. So easy, yeah. It's the easy out. Mm-hmm. But then, like you said, we were do taught they to hear do you? that. Because our parents yelled at us, so we just yelled at ours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just trying to break it. Yeah. Do you think your artistic expression and that being your vocation influenced your oldest to be interested in art? No idea. I guess you'll never know, right? We've never, she's never, we've never really taught art. I think hopefully I can help her now when she's frustrated about stuff in school and classes mm-hmm. and not seeing the importance in doing a project just that and the other. Maybe I can relate a little bit to what, how I approach art and what I wish I knew and did and what I found boring in our class. Mm-hmm. Even though she's in photography, it's kind of the same. And even a Johnny, my six, our sixteen year old, he's drawing and all that now. He doesn't ask me right. anything. Mm-hmm. Not a thing. He gets lessons from YouTube and all that. It stung a little bit in the very beginning, but now I just I know that's him and his personality. He, he likes to do stuff on his own, so I don't even trip off of it. But Kababi, just you so know you know, saying? it's not just you. Oh, I know. Because Avery will listen to me at, at all. I th- I'm a psychologist, and he'll be like, "I'm so stressed. I don't know what to do." I was, um, I could help you with that if you'd like. And then he walks off. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right just gotta let it go man. I, I, hey, I, I just say I'm here people pay me it's to like I'm here. do this yeah. I'm here when you it's like, are you know I'm wanting here. to listen yeah so alright <laughs> not just you yeah yeah so and like you said when you're in the school sometimes you can say things that the yeah. teachers might have said the principals might have said their parents might have said but they can hear you because you're this external person and you're coming at a different angle like I think people think about art as 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 much as it is respected when people you know realize that they couldn't create it, yeah, they sometimes like have an attitude towards it, like it's easy, like it's light, it's um, frivolous almost, yeah. And it's like no, it's it's actually quite rigorous, yeah. And so all that to say, I would imagine kids um, love what you do and are able to hear you in a a, a way with like some more levity than Absolutely. than their teachers yeah. and the serious people, yeah. yeah. It's been good. I'm looking forward to where it goes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So if people want to follow you and keep seeing your work and hearing you talk about your work, how could they do that? 
Um, level of importance or activity, Instagram first, and that's just CBABI. Um, uh, Facebook, Kababi Bayok. That might even be CBABI too, but Bayok if not. And then Kababi Just Paints is my um, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And if they want to buy prints, do you still have your website? Yeah, Kababi kababi.bigcartel.com is okay. where so kababibayok.com is mostly my 365 days of dad portfolio it's not really my so I, that's going to get some attention soon but I want everything on one platform but mm -hmm. yeah the big cartel is where people go to buy my work oh yeah so they can buy prints on big cartel and I would encourage people to do that because that's where you have some of the like the what were those called? Successories, remember those? Yeah. Where they'd have beautiful pictures and then words. Well, of course you remember them. Yeah. But you, I have one in my office. It uh, says something like, you don't have to be the best. You have to just or just be the best you yeah. or something like something, that. Yeah, and I was doing a bunch of those. And it's a little girl with a yeah. natural bun on her head. And yeah. it just reminds me of me as a little girl. And I love it. I love it. Yeah. So people can buy prints there. Do you have any other business pages or? Well, yeah. So they go to Facebook, Kababi Bayok Originals. There's a link to my big cartel page on that page. Okay. So they can go there and actually go to my storefront. Great. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you for joining me. And likewise. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And doing what you do in a way that, again, sometimes people don't realize the impact of art, Yeah. but is, is profoundly impacting what children see as possible. Absolutely. Well, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. And thank you for joining me on Raising Equity. I hope that you look up Kababi's work, that you support his work, and you also think about how you can in your own life expose children to seeing themselves and other people in a different light because it's important for us to help children see themselves and other people in their full humanity to raise equity. Thanks for joining me. See you next time on Raising Equity.